Today I'm going to be showing you how to compress images in Figma uh, using a plugin called Tiny Image. Uh, and if you haven't done so already, uh, we're going to install the Tiny Image plugin by going to your top toolbar, clicking on the Figma icon, and then clicking on the plugins sidebar over here, clicking Browse All Plugins. And then in the search bar at the top, uh, you can type in Tiny Image, it's just one word, and it'll pop right up. So uh, it, mine's got installed over here because I've already got it installed, um, but yours might have just the word install. So if you click on install, uh, it'll change into this installed status and then you should be ready to go. So if you open up a new file or go to a project that you're already working on, uh, you'll be able to see it by right clicking anywhere on the page, going down to plugins, and then you'll see tiny image JPEG slash PNG compressor. So we're just going to click on that. So now we're running the tiny image uh, compressor plugin. And this is giving us a list of all of the images in our file that have export settings on them. Uh, so what I mean by that is whenever you click on an image or, or a layer in Figma, uh, over on the right hand panel uh, outside of the plugin, you'll see uh, a few export settings. Uh, so in this case, uh, we've got an export setting for a JPEG at 1x and a JPEG at 2x, uh, but I can add or remove export settings there. So if I actually uh, remove one of those, and then I click this little refresh button in the toolbar in my plugin, you can see it's actually removed that export setting from uh, my image options. And so um, the plugin itself actually works uh, directly off any export settings that you've set up on your images. So uh, for example, if there were no export settings on this particular uh, frame, I'll just refresh that. Uh, you can see here it's saying that none of the selected layers uh, have any export settings and it's telling me to click on the plus sign in the export section over here uh, to add at least one setting and then click the refresh button up here. Uh, so I can go ahead and do that again and add that back in. I'll click refresh and then now you can see it's showed back up. So it all comes from this export settings panel over here, uh, very similar to how the native export module uh, works in Figma as well. So, so in my case, I've got export settings set on all of my images so far. Um, and as you just saw, the quickest way to kind of select uh, one image or multiple images is to select multiple layers uh, in your project that have export settings on them and that'll automatically uh, make that selection in your uh, tiny image window. Uh, the other way you can do it uh, is just to deselect everything. So if you just click outside of any images, uh, by default tiny image will load all the images with export settings on them in your project. Uh, so in my case it's listing all these images and I'm not selecting any of them it's just figuring out that they all have export settings. And then the, the way I can go through and pick which ones I want to export or not export is by using these checkboxes here. So for example, I can click on these and it will remove those from the selection of images that I'm going to export or compress. Um, if I want to get rid of all of them really quickly, I can click on this um, icon at the top here and that'll get rid of all of them. Uh, I can also click it again to select all of them, so I can jump between those really easily. Um, so that's really easy to select. Uh, so what I'm going to do is just show you uh, roughly how it works uh, to, to export any images. So I'm just going to do a few to start off with. So if we do this one, we'll do a couple of the PNGs, and we'll just start with those three for now. So I've selected my three images that I want to compress and export. And you'll notice at the top, uh, this is the different part that you usually would see in an export window, which is the compression setting. So at the moment, I've got my compression set to 75. Uh, I believe the, the default is 85, um, but it does save your compression settings between compressions so you don't have to keep uh, reconfiguring it every time if you're exporting quite a lot of images and you want them at the same quality all the time. Uh, so I can slide that all the way down to uh, 1, which is anything under 10 is considered ludicrous mode. Uh, then I go to aggressive, optimized, and sharp. Uh, so in this case, I'm just going to do a setting of 80. And I'm just going to hit compress. 
So what's that, what that is doing now is just going through those three images, compressing them, and it's going to give me a zip file where I can save them. So by default, it will name the zip file with the tiny image uh, naming, but we can actually change that to be whatever we want. So I'm just going to do um, first test uh, and just save that to the desktop. So if I open that up, uh, you'll see that I've got my first test. Just open that up and you can see the three images here all compressed. So they're all, all exported. Um, and the, the neat thing is we can actually see a breakdown of how much was saved per image and how much was saved in total. So we can see here it's a saving of 84, 74 and 75% uh, averaging out to 83% worth of savings. So we've just saved uh, 2.25 megabytes alone just from those three uh, image compressions. So there's a few other things we can actually do with, uh, with Tiny Image. So if we rerun re the plugin, uh, you can just click on Run Last Plugin or use the shortcut over here. So uh, the other things that I'm going to show you are related to uh, optimizing compressions per image and doing a couple of other neat things with the naming conventions. So you noticed before how we just did uh, compression at level 80. Uh, that's that's totally fine for what we wanted to do a moment ago, but we might have an instance where some of the photos or images we want to compress, uh, they require different compression settings. And so what we can do is we can set the global compression level or the default compression level up here. So I can leave that at um, 75 or 80. And then what I can do is I can actually set custom compression settings per image uh, over on this right hand side here. So all I have to do is click on this text input and in this case I'm going to make this one 45, I'm going to make this one uh, 55 and I'm going to make this Mount Fuji photo um, 76. So you can see um, this photo over here is inheriting the, the default number so that's still getting the 80 and everything else that I enable will get 80 uh, coming from up here. But I've overridden these two icons with 45 and 55 and this one with 76. Um, and this one at the bottom also gets 80 as well. So if I, if I now rerun that, hit compress again, uh, you'll see in a second what it's, what it's doing is it's actually compressing all of these images at completely different compression settings. So you can see as it's coming out here, uh, this one's at 55 as we set, this one's at 45, uh, this one's at 80. So I'm just going to save that again and open it back up on my desktop. So open up the new zip file and you can see here it's just compressed those, those five images. So down here you can see that we've got uh, all the different qualities that have been used. Uh, and you'll notice the savings are drastically different as well, depending on what we actually used in our uh, compression settings. So um, that's how you can actually go through and set custom compressions per image, and that can be really handy. Uh, if you're compressing some images that really need more aggressive compression, but some that don't need quite as much, uh, you can do all of those in the same compression and you don't have to go through and reset that slider every single time. So I'm just going to uh, run the plugin uh, one more time and this time I'm going to show you uh, the settings panel. So there are a few extra settings that aren't necessary but they're nice to be able to customize uh, your compression and export workflow even further. So this settings icon up here, if we click on that, you'll see this window pop up uh, which uh, allows us to do a couple things. So the first one, which is just a quick one, is a, a check toggle, a toggle switch for making the JPEG exports or compressions uh, into progressive JPEGs. And so progressive JPEGs are a slightly different type of JPEG where it's instead of the JPEG um, loading kind of from top to bottom, as you'll see happen on websites and things like that, uh, it doesn't actually load it from top to bottom. Uh, it loads a, a really uh, low quality version of it and then progressively loads better quality versions of the JPEG uh, until the full image is loaded. Um, so it's just it's just a different type of um, uh, compression that results in the JPEGs actually getting loaded differently. 
uh, on your website or, or in your application. So by default, that's turned off, but you can easily just turn that on by clicking the switch here. Uh, and then the second part in the settings panel is being able to customize your file names. So uh, this is really handy, especially if you're working to a certain convention or working with um, uh, certain clients or certain uh, requirements that requires prefixes or custom sort of formatting. So what we can do is we can actually mix and match uh, all of these variables that are going to populate our output based on what the what the Figma layer is. Um, so for an example, uh, we can start formatting uh, a, a string, uh, some text. So we might we might want the name. Uh, and you can just copy paste them from here as well if you want. So we might want the name, and then we might want uh, kind of the scale. So one x or two x. And I've just put the little at symbol in between there. Can even put a little underscore there, and then we also might want uh, the width and height. So I can grab the width. I can grab uh, the height. So I'll drop that in as well. Cool. And then we also might want today's date. So I'm just going to timestamp that with a date. And you can see it's filling out an example of what that's going to look like directly under the text. Um, so we can rearrange these in any order that we want. Uh, I can even prefix this, so I might just prefix it with um, compressed, just so I know that they're the compressed ones. And so this is a rough idea of, um, it's using one of the images as an example. Uh, so it's using this tiny image of, uh, layer as an example, and it's pre-populating all those, those real bits of data in there. And so this will format the, the output just like that. Um, so all we have to do is just click back out of that. You can either click the close button or just click out of it. Uh, it'll be saved in there. So if we're having a backup, you can see it's still there. And then all we need to do is, is rerun that uh, rerun that compression. So again, we can we can leave all these things as is um, and just run that compression one more time. I'm going to click compress. So it's doing exactly as it did uh, the time before this one. The only difference is we're going to see uh, completely different file names in the output. So I'm just going to save this one to my desktop. And I'm going to open that up. And you can see here the naming convention is matching exactly what we put into our file uh, just a moment ago. And there are all the images. So we've got our prefix, compressed, uh, the name, which matches the layer name. Uh, we put a little at prefix there with the scale. So that's 1x, this one's 2x. Uh, and then we put in the width and height. So um, you could even put in a little uh, x between those width and heights if you wanted it to look something more like that. Um, but in this case, we've just done underscores. So that's the width and the height, width and the height. And then uh, today's date as a bit of a suffix. Um, so that's quite different to what the last one looked like, which was purely just um, the file name or the layer name. So that's how you can customize your output uh, purely just by changing those few settings and using those placeholder, kind of mix and matching those placeholders. So uh, that's basically everything you need to know for compressing images directly from Figma. Uh, this is a much faster and more reliable way of compressing images without needing to use the default uh, module and exporting those and then dragging them into Photoshop or dragging them into a, a separate web application. So yeah, give Tiny Image a shot and you'll be able to see uh, the results of it for yourself and try it with your own images, um, try it out with your own workflow and hopefully you'll see some uh, efficiencies and save yourself a few headaches. So until next time, uh, thank you for watching and I hope you enjoyed it.